turn back uh, to the breaking news right now. The president's new national security advisor joining us, Senator Chris Coons. He's a Democrat on the Foreign Relations Committee from Delaware. Senator, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Wolf. So uh, what do you think, uh, Lieutenant General H.R. McMaster, the new national security advisor? A good selection by the president? I think he is a good selection, Wolf. Uh, everything I've heard uh, from his background, I have not met uh, General McMaster, but what I've been able to read and to hear about him uh, is all positive. His training, his experience, his education, his willingness to stand up and challenge uh, folks where he disagrees with them. I'm encouraged that he's going to be a strong contributor as National Security Advisor. Yeah, a lot of people are encouraged because he's the author of an important book, widely read in the military, entitled Dereliction of Duty, about the general's failure, all the general's failure for all practical purposes, to stand up to political leadership during the Vietnam War, which of course turned out to be a disaster. Is that a sign that he knows what he's doing? he's the right guy for this job to stand up to potential pressure to do the wrong thing from the political leadership. Well, Wolf, the fact that he's been critical of leadership uh, in Iraq uh, and the historic leadership in Vietnam and yet been promoted and been successful in the military suggests that he has the character and the integrity to be able to uh, bring tough messages and yet succeed. Um, as you well know, Steve Bannon will be a challenging opponent for him on the National Security Council. Uh, and I do think it's a positive that we're moving to a national security advisor who is not ideologically motivated, uh, but who is uh, rooted in America's national security interests. Uh, I do think that Steve Bannon has injected an air of uh, politics uh, into the National Security Council. Uh, and given how difficult this period is, given the challenges that President Trump is facing uh, from Iran and North Korea launching ballistic missiles uh, to the challenging conflict in Syria uh, and Russia's provocative actions, uh, he needs a strong national security team. And I'm encouraged by everything I've heard about this general and the role he may play on the National Security Council. And I assume you're also encouraged that General Mattis is the defense secretary. Uh, that Mike Pompeo is the CIA director, General Kelly is the Secretary of Homeland Security. Are you among those Democrats who are now a bit reassured that at least the National Security Homeland Security team is in relatively good shape? I'm encouraged. Uh, it's a significant number of generals, as you might note. Uh, and I do think we have a broader range of experience and a deep background in uh, foreign policy and national security than just generals. Uh, but the speech that was given by Vice President Pence this weekend at a security conference in Europe uh, was a badly needed and overdue reassurance to our NATO allies. Uh, it would have been better if President Trump himself had said those words. Uh, but it's important that the national security team begin to stabilize and that uh, we reassure our allies in Europe uh, as we jointly stand up to Russian aggression. With Michael Flynn out after only three weeks, uh, do you believe that uh, President Trump will not lift Russian sanctions? Well, I don't know what uh, President Trump's intentions are about Russian sanctions. Uh, it continues to be uh, puzzling and worrying um, that he has not been uh, direct in challenging uh, Vladimir Putin's inappropriate interference in our election uh, and in speaking forcefully against his ongoing occupation of Crimea, his meddling in eastern Ukraine, his human rights violations in Syria. Um, so there is a bipartisan bill in the Senate, Wolf, that's advancing that is picking up more and more Republican and Democratic co-sponsors uh, that would require congressional action before those sanctions could be lifted, sanctions that were imposed both for Putin's invasion of Ukraine uh, and for Putin's interference in our most recent election. Senator, uh, the president now walking down the stairs of Air Force One just arrived uh, back at Joint Base Andrews on this President's Day holiday here in the United States. Uh, he spent the weekend Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida, uh, and uh, he's going to be getting into uh, Marine One uh, for the quick little flight from uh, Joint Base Andrews uh, in suburban Maryland over to the White House South Lawn. Uh, uh, he's uh, accompanied by some of his aides as well. Uh, let's talk about uh, your role on the Judiciary Committee. You've asked the Attorney General, uh, uh, Jeff Sessions, the FBI Director, James Comey, for documents and a briefing on Michael Flynn's resignation. Tell us why you've asked for those documents. What are you uh, uh, anxious to learn about? Well, a subcommittee of the Judiciary Committee that's chaired by Lindsey Graham, Republican, uh, and where uh, the ranking as a Democratic senator from Rhode Island, uh, and of which I'm a member, all of us are asking 
um, for documents to be preserved uh, and for a briefing uh, from the FBI director and for testimony uh, from General Flynn in order that we can better understand the relationship between the highest levels of the Trump campaign uh, and uh, Vladimir Putin and uh, his Russian intelligence service. Uh, my concern uh, is that uh, General Flynn may well have engaged in conversations uh, with Russian leadership before he was a part of the Trump administration, uh, while they were still in transition, in a way that intentionally undermined the sanctions that were imposed by President Obama uh, to attempt to punish Vladimir Putin for interfering in our election. I think it should be a bipartisan matter um, that we investigate and push back on Russian interference in our election. Wolf, this isn't just about our last election, it's about our next election and making sure that we're working together um, responsibly to prevent a repeat of this most recent attack on America's democracy. When asked if he had actually read the transcripts of those communications between Michael Flynn and the Russian ambassador to the United States, so the White House Chief of Staff, Reince Priebus, said, and I'm quoting him now, uh, he said, I can't answer that question. That's a direct quote. Uh, do you believe that these transcripts do exist? Have you for example, seeing the transcripts, will you have access to them? Uh, I have not seen them yet. Um, I have spoken to members of the Intelligence Committee who've seen them, um, so I don't know what uh, Reince Priebus is uh, referring to when he says he can't see them. Um, they are highly classified and sensitive documents, um, and I think they will be made available to senators as appropriate uh, and in um, the, the right settings for us to review um, things that are at the highest level of classification. So you've been told that the, these transcripts do, in fact, exist? Yes. All right, Senator, stand by. Uh, we're going to continue our conversation. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back.